Hello all you lovely people. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, I was scrolling through my social pages just now and came across something very exciting. While we know Dubai to be one of the brilliant cities in the world to work, live and visit, what is also very interesting is that it is lauded as the third safest city in the world for solo female travelers in a recent survey. I'm sure that would have brought a smile to your faces as proud residents, but I've got something more to make it a lot better. While you were busy making the most of your weekend, we got busy bringing you some interesting stories from your very own Dubai. So without further ado, let's begin. She is one of the most versatile singers from Bollywood with a sparkling voice and has given us a string of hits like Kafirana, Nach Meri Rani, Burj Khalifa and many more. In an exclusive interview with Z Connect, singer and composer Nikita Gandhi spoke to us about pursuing her dream career, her passion and her inspirations. Let's hear it from her. Nikita, welcome to Dubai. Welcome to our show Z Connect. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Where from the offline conversation I was having with you itself, I knew what a fun conversation it <laughs> it's going to be on be. record also. Awesome. So let's let's get straight into that. So Nikita, I'm going to take you a little bit behind in your journey. Sure. Uh, you studied dentistry. Right. <laughs> I mean, from you that, have great teeth, by the way. That's <laughs> the, the weird thing about being a dental student and a dentist now is that, unfortunately or fortunately, the first thing I notice in every you video is that. <laughs> So, These have great teeth. Yeah, you These do. Have like, wow, teeth. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, like, I swear to God, I was going to ask you, have you got laminates done? Because to me, it looks like you've got laminates. I done. recently got them done from <laughs> Bombay. Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. So, so you you studied that, and then then how did playback singing just happen for you? It actually happened while I was in dental school. Like growing up, I've done dance, music, like everything. I've always loved to do things, like sports and just extracurricular activities were like a major chunk of my life and uh, when I went to college I was in Chennai and I was doing dentistry and I actually joined A.R. Rahman's school more like a stress buster but I was like Sara din padai nahi karna hai. so I want to have something to go to at the end of the day and that became a bigger and bigger part of my life and I started he uh, like Rahman sir sort of heard me in some audition that I'd actually done for the the college like mm. some choir thing and then he called me for some small small projects and that became more and more and more and then suddenly i was singing in tamil films yeah and then suddenly i was singing for more music directors and then suddenly i was singing in bollywood <laughs> so it was like it just kind of happened yeah one after another and here you are so. yeah <laughs> but tell me having also learned western music did that kind of help you to create your personal style the way it is today Actually, I've never dissected it. Like, I've never tried to study my style. Because mm. a lot of people ask me that and tell me that, they're like, you know, is it because you have a different vibe or whatever. I was like, honestly, I thought, no. I never ever imagined I would sing in the Indian film industry because of the fact that I've always grown up listening to jazz and blues. And I've all, I've, when I was in college, I used to do part-time gigs in Hilton and all these hotels just for, like, fun. For me, the the... The excitement was to get free sushi in the you know buffet. So all this was just like because I loved music and I loved to sing and I used to sing English actually a lot more mm. and I used to barely listen to film music mm. and so I never thought you know that I would enter this industry and somehow I think the fact that maybe I sing in that style has you know sort of made it more interesting for me yeah. to be part of the industry. Yeah. And you're able to sing in so many different languages, but. Uh, for a language that you don't know so well, it, does it become a little challenging or difficult to emote through that language? Not at all. I think the beauty of music is that the the emotions are very self-explanatory, right? Like you don't have to understand uh, um, what the person is saying. The emo like the mu the, the melody, the arrangement says a lot, and I think that's why. We listen to, if you think about it, like we listen to so many other languages like Spanish and French and like whatever and then we don't always understand what we're listening to but we just like it. Yeah. So it's that's what's attractive about music and that's what attracted me in so like in singing so many languages even in, uh, I mean of course Tamil I started like understanding with yeah. time 
but like i've done kannada music i've done telugu mm. and i don't really like understand much of it but mm. i think it's just so like it's such a heart to heart thing True. you know it's not a brain thing music <laughs> i feel you've worked with uh, you've collaborated with music directors also you worked so much with them it is there someone still on like your list bucket in list. your yeah bucket list your dream list yeah i mean the list will keep i think growing <laughs> with yeah. time even though i've worked with so many incredible uh, maestros and like re- yeah. really like big people and i'm very grateful but of, of course you know you can you, you once you get a taste of it you want more <laughs> and then it's like that you know like there's so many people i think i'm yet to work with uh, whether it's um like with composers there's i think vishal i've sung with i've never worked sung for him yeah with uh Vish- for vishal shekar sel again i've worked with them i would want, love to work more um vishal bhardwaj ji like mm. so many um people who i've interacted with but maybe not you know so, like the yeah. list is endless yeah who uh, which celebrity in the industry which actress do you think your voice goes on the best oh i think my standard answer has been priyanka <laughs> chopra <laughs> because she is also got this tuta phuta voice like <laughs> but uh, and also cuz she's on the bucket list not on the <laughs> already sung for list yes yeah so i think there's so many people like mm. that i um Kiara loves having me on her songs and she's we've met in person she's told me that like she conveyed it to uh, you know to me through the through the music supervisor during Burj Khalifa she like I wanted to sing all my songs i think yeah. it's yeah i love i love that uh, feeling to <laughs> to have to have that kind of um, you know love from the actors and Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me you were telling me you love uh, sushi. Have you have you <laughs> gone around <laughs> trying uh, any Japanese restaurant in Dubai yet? Not yet actually. I've never had sushi here. But it's not just like I mean I love food. Mm. So I, I mean wherever you know when in Rome like it's if I'm here I want to try food from here. Yeah. It's no, of course you have to try the arabic food before i have of course i have and i love it <laughs> <laughs> now well, we wish you all the very best and of course we're not letting you go without you singing for us so sing awesome. one of your favorite songs what what do you i mean i can sing whatever you want me to sing anything that you are right now uh, <laughs> anything that you would love to. i mean i feel like i have to sing burj khalifa because i'm in dubai i know it's and it's just it's going like on how it's right now. outside this room <laughs> so okay oh yeah हट मेरे बैनर नी छप दे मेरे बैनर नी लोग तो जेलस कर दिए काइली जेनर नी मेरे हुसन दे चर्चे चर्चे मेरे हुसन दे चर्चे चर्चे लंदन तो अमेरिका मुंडे हाथ दिला दे मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा हां मैनु बुर्ज खलीफा अमेजिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच ब्यूटीफुली सॉन्ग थैंक यू सो मच लिखिए थे Time for a quick break but we will take you to a celebration of immersive art right after so stay with us Welcome back If you are into art and aesthetics then you would have surely heard about this multi-sensory experience called Aya Universe where art and technology meet to bring a breathtakingly beautiful world If not then let's explore this transformative journey spread across 40000 square feet with me. Let's go. Alexander, how are you? Great. Thanks so much for coming to visit Aya today. Thank you for having us here and welcome to our show Z Connect and we're here to cover the Aya universe which looks magnificent by the way and we want to know all about it from you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. Aya is a digital immersive uh, experience park that we built here at Wafi City in Dubai. It's a 40,000 square foot digital immersive space. Really like a portal into a world that's really enabled by technology and content. It's highly immersive. We use different formats of technology in in the park. Anything from projection mapping to bioluminescent gardens, robot controlled uh lighting systems, uh you know, uh experiences that bring real nature into the space yeah. like water and flora. etc and uh we have 184 minutes of content in the park and so you're really bringing uh the visitors into a very unique multi room there's 12 zones in Aya digital immersive world for them to uncover create social media and etc so it's very special 
Great. And why did you choose Dubai as a destination to start with IA Universe? Of course, I mean, Dubai is a thriving retail ecosystem. Uh, Dubai is one of the most visited cities in the world. Uh, Dubai has a tourist demographic that's very much in line with uh, the sort of consumer base that we, that we uh, want to bring to IA and to House of Hype. Yeah. And so we saw an opportunity in the market to bring a new format of entertainment and attraction to the market in that medium format, something that's highly tech enabled, which yeah. I think speaks, speaks to the audience here, a very social media, media active audience, uh, an audience that is highly engaged in gaming worlds as well. And so we saw the unique kind of opportunity to kind of recreate the entertainment attractions industry here, but also look at it from a retail ecosystem standpoint. Yeah. So yeah. It's very so, so tell me, I have yet to see the IR universe and take a walk inside, but when I walk in, what can I expect to see? What kind of an experience will I have? It's a, it's a sensory overload is the best way to put it. Highly immersive spaces, unique pieces of content, music that really feels like you're in kind of different formats of a wonderland. Yeah. Uh, this is stimulation on steroids. This is an experience that is elevating. This is an experience that really transports you to a universe far away and almost uh, creates an experience where you walk back into your normal life, into the white hallways of a mall, into the, you know, uh, your car on Chicxayat Road. It's, uh, it's almost like, uh, uh, you know, you're in an elevated environment for an hour to an hour and a half and then you're brought back, brought back down to earth and it just leaves you yeah. wanting to come back. Yeah. Tell me how uh, and in what ways is our universe different from other immersive art experiences around the world? For sure, I mean for us we really looked at the productization of entertainment uh, in this context, so in the immersive space. So all the content and IP is developed by Hyperspace. And so we really build it for the consumer. So we're not taking existing IP and repackaging it as an experience. We're creating IP and kind of content that I would say photographs extremely well in social media is highly immersive in terms of the nature of content. And so I wouldn't really categorize as an art experience, but using kind of creativity and unique content forms to immerse the audience rather than kind of give something to them that is like overtly, you know, fine art or kind yeah. of artistic. Great. Thank you so much, Alex. It's been wonderful talking to you and I can't wait to enter the universe and check it out. Super. Thank you. <laughs>
40,000 entries, 15 categories and images that tell mesmerizing stories and much more was part of the third edition of the Keoxia Excellence Awards conceived by ISD Global. Held at the Theatre of Digital Art, TODA, this event was a salutation to the creativity and talent for the region's amateur and professional photographers and videographers. To know more, join me. Over 40,000 entries, 15 categories, 10 highbrow jury members, images that told compelling stories, a packed house at the eclectic TODA, Theatre of Digital Arts, Souk Madina Jumeirah, Dubai, an immersive experience at the auditorium, hand pan music, a virtual avatar keynote, a multicultural invitee presence, loads of prizes and trophies, delight and despair, the third edition of the Keoxia Excellence Awards ceremony had it all. Conceptualized, engineered and executed by Dubai headquartered creative and branding agency ISD Global, the awards is a salutation to the creativity, ingenuity and talent of the region's professional and amateur photographers and videographers. Not to mention an initiative to enhance and bolster the creator economy by also encouraging students, hobbyists and homemakers to participate as well. This year's edition of the Keoxia Excellence Awards had entries coming in from the UAE, the rest of the GCC, Africa, Bangladesh, Philippines, Myanmar, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, India, Bali, etc. Being a multi-sensory, multimedia, immersive art ecosystem, it is the first art initiative in the UAE that combines multiple forms of digital art, including multimedia exhibitions, contemporary immersive installations, and art in virtual reality. TODA also aims to educate using art and eventually become an entertainment hub in the middle of Souk Madina Jumeirah, Dubai. Going in for a quick break, but we'll be back with something to tantalize your taste buds right after. Stay with us. Welcome back. Everyone is worried about how to strike a balance between healthy and not so healthy when it comes to food during Ramadan. Worry not, Chef Priyansh has the answers to all your food queries. I hope all that you learn now will help you have fulfilling and healthy meals during this blessed month. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Priyanch. We're reaching the end of Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem. Over the past few weeks, I've been sharing some easy, delicious and vegan recipes with you. Today is not going to be any different. We're going to make a cabbage steak and some peanut butter milkshake. Let's get started. These are the ingredients we're going to be using today. We've got coriander powder, soy sauce, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, Kashmiri chili powder, nutritional yeast, tahini paste, hot sauce, a few garlic cloves, vegan butter, some salt, some water, our cabbage and olive oil. Let's start cooking. I'm going to take this cabbage and we're going to cut it into a steak. That means through the middle we're going to cut two lines like this so that we get one nice round steak. So here's an easy trick to cut these into steaks. We'll cut from the bottom because now we can see where the core is. So it's easier to do a line through the core. So we're gonna go one cut like this. We're gonna go another one like this. Now this is our steak. Okay, so before we cook this cabbage, we're gonna make a little spice mix that we're gonna brush over the top and then we're gonna put it in. So we're gonna use one tablespoon coriander powder, one tablespoon soy sauce, one teaspoon cayenne pepper, half tablespoon Kashmiri chili powder, half tablespoon garlic powder, 
one tablespoon nutritional yeast, a pinch of salt. We're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm going to mix it and form a paste. You're going to make sure there are no lumps so that all the spices are broken down and equally distributed. So we've got this beautiful mix of spices over here. I'm going to use this brush and brush it all over and make sure that it goes through in all the gaps. It may look like there's a lot of spices on here, but remember that all of this will go through and it has to cook the entire cabbage. Okay, so my pan is a bit hot. I'm going to add half a tablespoon of olive oil. Just going to wait for it to heat up. Okay, so my pan and the oil in the pan is now hot. So I'm going to carefully lift this up and put it face down. I'm going to use this re the rest of the spice mix and I'm going to brush it on top as well. I've got about half a tablespoon of the spice mix left. We're going to save it for the end when we're going to add some butter in and baste it all together. So for now, this is just going to slow cook. You want to make sure it browns on both sides and it cooks all the way through. So the cooking time is going to take roughly five to seven minutes on each side. And then once both sides are browned, it'll take another five to seven minutes to make sure it's cooked all the way through. I'm going to cover this with a lid so that the steam cooks it all the way through. Okay, so we're just going to check in on this now. So it looks like one side has been cooked through really well, so now we're just going to flip it. So you can see there's a lot of browning here. All the spices have nicely stuck to the top. So we're just going to make sure that the other side is cooked like that and then it's cooked all the way through as well. So while we're waiting for this cabbage to cook, let's make the tahini sauce. So I've got a tablespoon of tahini here. I've got half a tablespoon of hot sauce and one tablespoon of water in this bowl. I'm just going to add it all in. I'm just going to mix till it all comes together and becomes a smooth consistency. I'm just going to add a pinch of salt as well. It's all come together, so you can see how creamy it is now. So now the steak is cooked on both sides. I'm just going to add butter and garlic now and we're going to reduce the heat to make sure that it doesn't burn. So I'm going to go in with one tablespoon of vegan butter. I'm going to add two garlic cloves and the remaining spice mixture. So now I'm going to baste the cabbage. So basting is using this fat at the bottom and we're just going to scoop it on top to make sure that it cooks everything and it coats everything as well. I'm just going to use my spoon to baste this cabbage. I'm just going to cover it for another two minutes and then it will be ready. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. I'm just going to remove it now. It's fully cooked through and then we're going to dress it with this beautiful sauce. I'm going to use this beautiful spicy butter to coat the top. Okay, so this is now beautifully cooked through. I'm going to finish it with this really nice spicy tahini. So we drizzle the sauce. I'm just going to add a few sprigs of coriander. This cabbage steak is now ready. So we've made the main dish. We're going to serve it with a peanut butter milkshake. It's super simple. It only uses three ingredients. Peanut butter, banana, and soy milk. Let's blend all these ingredients together and make it a beautiful smoothie.
Peanut butter is a great source of protein and healthy fats. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of peanut butter. We're gonna use one ripe banana. Now banana is a great source of potassium, fiber, and it also adds natural sweetness to our dish. And soy milk. About two cups. I've added everything in here, which is gonna blend it really quickly till it's all smooth. That was so simple to make. We just put three ingredients in a blender and blended it. Now I'm gonna remove it and serve it in this glass. A peanut butter milkshake is now ready to be served. These are the dishes we've made today. This is a cabbage steak with a spicy tahini dressing and a peanut butter milkshake. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We'll be back again next week with a beautiful Eid recipe. Till then, try this, tag us on our socials, invite your friends over, and be a host to so many compliments. So this was all about our week's action and adventure. I hope you liked watching it. We are going to be back next week on Sunday, same time. Until then, if you miss us, do keep scrolling through our social media handles and do not forget to subscribe. Adios for now. Take care.